3. The Lost Ship of the California Desert Legend holds that there's a treasure-laden ship hidden within California's Salton Sea Basin, which is part of the Sonoran Desert. Stories of its origins date back to 1862, with the first claimed sightings. A Los Angeles Daily News report from 1870 describes a half-buried ship that could be seen from miles away. One story identifies the vessel as the content, which belonged to the English explorer and privateer Thomas Cavendish. According to another tale, the ship is a galleon left behind by Spanish mutineers. There are also rumors that it's a Viking ship. Numerous expeditions have failed to find the vessel, leading to claims that it must have sunk to the bottom of the Salton Sea. But there's a problem with this theory. While large inland seas have cyclically formed and dried up in the Salton Sea Basin throughout history due to overflowing from the Colorado River, the current body of water didn't exist until 1905. When people first began reporting sightings of a ship in the area, the basin was dry, and no lake had existed within it since prehistoric times, long before European explorers traveled to North America. The Salton Sea is also landlocked, meaning there's no way to access it from the ocean, which makes it pretty far-fetched to think that a Spanish ship had any reason to be in the region or any way to get to it. Some believe that the vessel could be a ferry or steamboat that got swept away from the Colorado River during a flood. But even this is highly unlikely, if not impossible. The sea is rapidly shrinking, and its current maximum depth is just 43 feet, 13 meters, less than the height of most ships. Yet there's no sign of the fabled vessel. During its heyday in the 1950s and 60s, the Salton Sea, which is actually a lake, became a popular resort destination among California's affluent residents who were eager to escape their hectic everyday lives in Los Angeles and other populated areas. Yacht clubs, vacation homes, golf courses, and other amenities to keep vacationers entertained popped up along the Salton Sea's coast. And for a short while, boating and fishing were popular activities. But the lake's popularity among the who's who of SoCal didn't last very long. By the 1970s, the shoreline began to recede and the lake started to stink like rotten eggs. Between having no outlet and serving as a reservoir for agricultural runoff, the Salton Sea became highly saline and polluted with fertilizers and other chemicals. The extremely dry and hot desert climate, along with a years-long drought that has plagued the American Southwest for decades, have only accelerated the speed at which the water is evaporating into the surrounding atmosphere. Tourists stopped coming, Businesses closed, and resort communities became ghost towns. The changes went from off-putting to dangerous in the early 1990s. Fish died out in droves from botulism and other diseases. Birds died en masse from eating the infected fish. Toxic algae blooms covered the water's surface, and the Salton Sea became uninhabitable for wildlife and dangerous for any sort of human recreation. The once bustling vacation communities came to resemble a post-apocalyptic wasteland. In 2012, the lake's foul odor wafted into areas as far as 150 miles, 241 kilometers away, including Los Angeles. As the lake got further and further away from the beachside resorts that once sat alongside it, the only things it revealed were animal carcasses and toxic dust. The wind started to blow the dust around and the problem worsened as the water continued to evaporate, with devastating consequences to public health. Asthma, lung cancer, cardiac disease, and other ailments have spiked among the region's remaining population, the vast majority of whom are members of historically underserved minority communities. It's been years since the air quality met federal standards. Efforts are underway to combat the pollution. Restoring the Salton Sea to its previous levels or cleaning the area up would prevent the hazardous dust from entering the air, and there are numerous ideas being considered for the best ways to make the area safer. If by some chance there's really a lost ship lurking in the basin, there's a good chance it'll never be found, but finding it is most likely the least of concerns among the people who deal with the everyday realities of living near the Salton Sea. 
and even the most strong believers in the mystery ship's existence would probably change their mind about looking for it after getting anywhere near the sights and smells of the toxic reservoir that's become infamously known as California's worst ever ecological disaster. 2. A Lost Canyon During the late 1950s, the Glen Canyon Dam was built on the Colorado River in northern Arizona leading to the creation of America's second-largest artificial reservoir by maximum water capacity. Known as Lake Powell, the man-made lake straddles the Utah-Arizona border. It functions as a vital water storage facility for four states and is also a major vacation destination, attracting around 2 million visitors per year. But Lake Powell is rapidly shrinking. Part of this is caused by sediments that flow in from the Colorado River and settle at the bottom of the reservoir, depleting billions of gallons of water storage space every year since its creation. A severe chronic drought that started in 2000 and is still going on today has dramatically accelerated the water loss. Since the beginning of the so-called Millennium Drought, also known as the Southwest North American Mega Drought, Lake Powell's surface has dropped by 140 feet, 42.7 meters. Between 2020 and 2021, the water level decreased by 50 feet, 15.2 meters. As the shortage reached a crisis point in 2021, Utah Governor Spencer Cox said that only divine intervention could save Lake Powell, and encouraged believers of all faiths to pray for desperately needed rain. At the same time, Parts of the Glen Canyon that hadn't been seen since before the reservoir was created became visible again. Writing for The New Yorker, Elizabeth Colbert described how one of the lake's most famous features, the La Gorse Arch, could be visited by boat in 2019, but was a half mile .8 kilometers away from the lake's shoreline just two years later. It's just one of numerous mesmerizing aspects of the landscape that have become increasingly visible in recent years. And it's also one of the reasons not everyone is terribly upset that the reservoir is disappearing. In fact, there's an entire movement to drain the lake and restore the canyon to its natural state. Known as the Glen Canyon Institute, it was founded in 1996, just a handful of years before the ongoing drought began. During a tour of Lake Powell with the organization's executive director, Eric Balkin, Colbert observed red cliffs rising up hundreds of feet on either side of what was once the Colorado River's main channel. They eventually hit water that was so shallow, they had to exit their boat and walk. The group visited a stunning rock formation called Cathedral in the Desert, which became visible in 2005 and again in 2019. Before the construction of the Glen Canyon Dam, the cathedral was a popular pilgrimage site among explorers, known for its domed ceiling and a waterfall that poured down into a shallow pool. When the water level began to drop, but the cathedral was still mostly submerged, it served as a recreational diving site. During her visit, Colbert encountered some visitors who, unlike her anti-reservoir tour guides, were sad to see the water disappearing. They told her that their visits to Lake Powell in recent years had become more and more disappointing, making it clear that they were less impressed by the emerging landscape than the activists campaigning to drain the reservoir. In all fairness, it may seem counterintuitive that anyone would be happy to see the reservoir shrinking, even if it means being able to enjoy the canyon's long-lost scenery. But the Glen Canyon Institute has other reasons for their agenda. When Lake Powell was created, it drowned countless habitats and the wildlife within them, killing some creatures directly and fatally depriving others of their food sources. These habitats are gradually returning, bringing certain life forms back to the area for the first time in decades. Archaeological sites left behind by Native Americans who lived in the area for thousands of years are also re-emerging. The canyon is filled with stone cliff dwellings, spiritual meeting places, grain storage structures, and other features of the indigenous communities who abruptly abandoned the canyon centuries ago, for reasons that remain unclear to this day. What side of the debate are you on? Do you see the disappearing reservoir as alarming proof of worsening climate change? Or do you think it's best to take a hands-off approach and let nature take its course? 
Let us know in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. 1. Roman and Medieval Ruins Annual droughts have plagued vast swaths of the European continent in recent years, and they seem to be getting worse with time. The year 2022 saw the worst drought conditions in decades. Spain was among the hardest hit nations, thanks to a combination of unusually high temperatures and a devastating lack of rain. Some of the most shocking changes could be seen in the country's northwestern Galicia region, where reservoirs shrunk dramatically in size, revealing the ruins of settlements dating as far back as the first century and as recently as the 1990s. Included among the re-emerging villages is an ancient Roman military settlement called Aquis Querquenis. The site functioned as a barracks for the soldiers of the Legio VII Gemina Legion of the Roman Imperial Army. As many as 600 men were stationed at the camp during the construction of a road called the Via Nova. Also known as the Via 18, the 205-mile, 330-kilometer thoroughfare connected the cities of Bracara Augusta, known today as Braga, and Asturica Augusta, which is now called Astorga. It was built between 79 and 80 AD, under the rule of the Emperor Vespasian and his son Titus, who succeeded Vespasian as Rome's ruler after his father's death. Aquis Querquenis remained occupied until 120 AD, where the Legio VII Gemina was reassigned elsewhere. The unit abandoned the base, and it was soon forgotten about. Its ruins were discovered during the 1920s by local archaeologist Florentino Lopez Cuevillas, who carried out limited excavations at the site. In 1949, the Spanish government flooded the settlement to create the Os Concas Reservoir. It was one of numerous dams that were built under the isolationist rule of dictator Francisco Franco as a way to boost the country's ailing economy in the aftermath of a brutal civil war. Little thought was given to the fact that creating these reservoirs involved flooding historically valuable archaeological ruins, as well as the forced relocation of entire villages that were located within each reservoir's floodplain. Parts of Aquis Querquenis have appeared a handful of times since 1975 during periods of unusually low water levels. Archaeologists took advantage of these opportunities to further explore the site and learn more about it. Based on the findings, experts believe that the settlement is one of the largest Roman military camps in the Iberian Peninsula, consisting of a headquarters, two grain storage buildings, a hospital, five barracks, and the Viara Mansion, which housed traveling officials. Excavations have also uncovered roads, drains, towers, gates, walls, and a perimeter road. But researchers never got the opportunity to fully excavate the site, because parts of it remained underwater even when the reservoir's water level dropped. They were only able to view Aquis Querquenis in its entirety through aerial photographs which revealed a sprawling 5.9-acre, 2.4 hectares complex. During the record-setting drought that struck Spain in 2022, Aquis Querquenis was revealed in its entirety for the first time since before the reservoir's creation. Despite its archaeological importance, Aquis Querquenis was only designated a cultural heritage site, or Bien de Interés Cultural, in 2018. Visitors can learn about it at the nearby Aque Querquenai Via Nova Interpretation Center, which houses a museum dedicated to the fort and the road built by the soldiers who were stationed there. There are also guided tours of the settlement, although the site's accessibility depends on the reservoir's water level at any given time. Around the same time that Aquis Querquenis became fully visible, the ruins of an 11th-century church reappeared in the country's northeastern Catalonia region. Until the 1960s, the church was part of a village called Sant Roma de Sao. Like Aquis Querquenis, the town was submerged as part of Francisco Franco's ambitious dam-building program. Unlike the military complex, people were still living there when the decision was made to create the Sao Reservoir residents were left with no choice but to pack up and move, leaving the village uninhabited for the first time in over 1,000 years. 
They packed their valuables and even exhumed and reburied their dead before heading inland. The church's three-story bell tower is normally visible, but the rest of the structure and all the other buildings nearby are typically underwater. During occasional periods of extreme drought, the church emerges entirely from the water. This happened in 2022, drawing a throng of curious visitors to the site. Due to their fragility, the ruins are fenced off to prevent members of the public from getting close enough to damage them. In the past, experts have attempted to fortify the crumbling structure with concrete, but it appears to be slowly losing its battle against the elements. And as long as it remains subjected to the reservoir's fluctuating water levels, it's simply not feasible to invest in restoring it to its former glory. Thanks for watching. Which one of these discoveries shocked you the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.